Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome back. I would call this season two. Welcome to season two of Talks with Yori. My name is Yori Garrick, for those of you who may not know me, and I am joined with my friend, Carol Fisher. Hi, Car. Hi. Hi, Yori. Hi, everybody. What's going on? Oh, life. Life is good. Life is going on amidst everything. There are things to smile about, things to celebrate, things to be grateful for. Yes. That's going on. Amen. 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 Lots of things to be grateful for. Amen. Amen. Before we get into our conversation, I'm going to go live on my personal Facebook page. Mm -hmm. So you know how to go live, Car? Yeah, let me, yeah, let me do that. Yeah. And I also want you to know that during the course of our conversation, Hello, Monique will be monitoring the comments. So if you see me referring to my phone, which is up here, not ignoring you, but I am just ensuring that we get, we see everything that is being yes. talked about. Don't want to miss anything. So I am now live. Let me turn it down, car. Yeah. The sharing and then cut. Right, turn it down. Okay. All righty. Tell me when you're ready. Mm -hmm. All right. So a few months ago, I think it was June last year, actually. It hasn't been a year yet, car. But in June of 2020, I met with Carol on this platform to talk about adjusting to life after divorce. No, that night, we encountered the worst of technical issues you can imagine. It mm. kept disconnecting and reconnecting and disconnecting and reconnecting. And then it, it was pitchy and patchy and couldn't hear each other. And it was the most frustrating experience. So I had said to her from last year that I wanted us to redo our talk and I wanted to, I wanted to have done it privately and then posted the video. But then I said, hmm, we can always do a part two. Carol is a natural, a natural talker. <laughs> she has lots to say. And so here we are again tonight to talk about, to, encounter, to do part two of our series, but we were just going to want to recap some of what we talked about the first time, because we may have viewers who were not with us that first time and also viewers who were with us, but were frustrated as well with the lack of professional professionalism with the sound yeah. and technical issues, right? Mm -hmm. So Carol, take me back to when you were a young damsel. If I remember correctly, you told me that you were not the typical young lady growing up who envisioned marriage and had the fairy tale about marriage. So tell me a little bit about that. Okay. So when I was growing up, as far as I know, most of my faculties were around, okay, I'm going to do school. I'm going to do school. You know, my parents, my father, especially would say, we'll get an education so you can get a good career. So I was about school. Yes, I was about church because I got saved at 15. So I was about school and church. I never had the mindset of um, getting married young and start family and this. And I wasn't there. I was thinking more career and church more than anything. Uh, nonetheless, there was a little um, pothole in the road. And so I didn't go straight on to university. I went to community college instead. Did not like the community college experience, but it was a good one. I still have very good friends from community college. After I finished community college, an opening happened at this wonderful institution nearby, National Water Commission. And I, I went, I went to work. Went to work within 18 months of, <clears throat> of, of being there. <laughs> I met and married a, a, a gentleman and that started a beautiful relationship. It was a beautiful friendship and, mm -hmm. and dating and courting. We really dated, and, and that's that's one of the, the things that I like. We dated, we courted, and then we got married. Um, and it was going pretty well. We were friends. We were together in church. We were serving youth ministry together. Well, we served children's ministry together. Then we served. We were serving youth ministry, and 
you know, stuff. Well, I started going back to school. And part of what I like to tell folks, when you're telling your story, always be comfortable enough to share things that gives body to the story. You know, you might say, I, you know, things started going. But I like to say, I started going back to school. Mm -hmm. um, in going back to school, I'm not sure what doors got open and who put in their heads and all of that stuff. But we went through a series of, I, I want to say disconnecting and you know you patch it and it disconnect and you patch and I um, finished the first degree and came home and things were mellow uh, at least so I thought you know we were going out and spending a lot of time together and um, an opportunity came up I think within a year or a little over a year an opportunity came up for me to go do a master's um, we had a discussion and he said, well, you know, because the price was really right, Yuri. And so he said, well, if it's an opportunity, you know, I think you should go. And I went off to school. Little did I know that I would not necessarily come back home to the life that I knew to be my normal. A lot of things happened. Okay. Just for context, you say you wait you got the opportunity to, to do your master's and the first degree you got the opportunity to do the first degree but I think for context let us know where you lived in comparison to where you were going to school okay yeah thanks all right so we lived in Montego Bay at the time for the first degree I did the first two years in Montego Bay I got a transfer from work to going to Kingston to finish the first degree mm -hmm. and because it was a transfer I was allowed to go back at the end of the two years beautiful okay. experience so grateful for it and then when the masters came up though, um, I went up in a position acting and then I took vacation because there was a little thing with HR and admin in terms of doing a switch per se. While I was there doing all of that, somebody resigned and so an opening came about. So by the December, I was in a position in Kingston right okay. and we were living in Montego Bay so there was traveling you know back and forth okay so how often would you go home okay so it would be every other week okay yeah he would and, and, come I, up and you would go down right it's good okay. that you ask that question so let me go a little so when I was in Kingston doing the first degree mm -hmm. he would do most of the traveling most of the traveling because you know wouldn't want me to do the driving and all of that. When right. I came in the second time, I noticed though that mm -hmm. I was the one mostly going home. Oh, okay. uh, of course, that didn't, I'm not sure if right at the start, if it was an indication to me that something was off. It was later on in our mm -hmm. discussions that I realized that there was reason or there were reasons for him to stay at base in Montego Bay okay. and not be traveling into Kingston. So for you, was that, you said you were not aware that it was an issue initially. How long in the, in you doing your master's then would you, did you realize that there was an issue why he was not traveling the way you were traveling or coming okay. in? Right. Mm -hmm. So the second semester of the second year mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. when all of it came out. Okay. Right. And that, at that time, he said to me, you should have known that though I said it was okay, um, you should have known to stay. Wow. Talk about that a little bit. How, how do you think he expected you to have known based on who he was? How would you have known that? Okay. So I think in all fairness to him, There was a discussion before I won, but he was more senior in his, in his career and needed, also needed um, certain qualification for certain things. Mm -hmm. There was a lot. So there was a discussion that, okay, I would go do, go get the, the first degree out of the way, and then I'd come back, and then he would look into opportunities to go. Um, okay. I, we used to have the conversation before I finished 
okay, when are you going to go? So-and-so is in Montego Bay. You should sign up. But there was a lot of delay and there was a lot of uh, eye pushing him or him saying, okay, not yet and all of that. So it, he, I guess in that statement, he was saying, I should not have gone back until he started and completed a first degree. Okay. Even with all the weight and stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So you fight if you finally have the conversation that you should have known and everything is not coming out. So what did that lead into? Hmm. Okay. So we had the conversation because I noticed I was I was doing the traveling like I, I like to say I was traveling like I was the man. And there were some other things. This gentleman was very private, very nice and wonderful, but a very private person. Mm -hmm. And then I don't know if I told you, but there was a notorious phone call that I got that changed the way oh, I was seeing things or opened my eyes to things that I don't know. My head was in the center. I, ju I was just not seeing. It's not one of those conversations where a matey call you to say stuff. It was not that. It was a conversation. Another woman called me to share information with me as it relates to office discussions that were happening where she worked. Mm -hmm. And that conversation really rocked my intestines. There were a number of things that she spoke to that was not coincidence. They were too private for a third, for a person to just make up out of the blues. Clearly it would indicate that there was a third party getting information and repeating the thing. Mm -hmm. I remember Yuri, I was home and I was cooking. I was in Montego Bay. I was back home. Mm -hmm. I was cooking and I was um, doing laundry and I continued cooking and I was hanging out the clothes and I was shaking. You know, that nervous feeling? I was, I was nervous. I, and a lot of things started to make sense in terms of certain phone bills, in terms of certain you know, times that he was getting home and the lack, the lack of conversation with us and the locking off of, of certain pleasures and desire for certain pleasures when it, as it relates to me. And so I, I was jolted into something that I don't know that I was prepared for, but you know what? I still give God thanks for it, for the conversation, for that lady calling me on my my number. I no longer have that number still. It, was it that was, someone that you knew, Carol? No. The person who no, called I you? did not know her. What happened? Oh, and she said this. She said, there's one mutual friend between us. Wow. So to date, I have no idea who the mutual friend, but I know it sounded like it was a colleague. And she called me on my number. You were phone. Right. Wow. Um, I, I, I detected that that's where she got my number from. Because uh -huh. she said that the person didn't want to be the one to say anything because she knew both of us personally, the other person. Uh -huh. Right. So this lady, I don't know her. I, I imagine sometimes we may have met, she may know me. I probably would buy her a bouquet now because she was, she was nervous too. Mm -hmm. She was nervous. You could hear her shaking. And, and she was saying stuff, I hope you're not recording me. I don't want to get into whatever, but I feel I need to tell you. Because what happened, Yuri, and this is it. Sometimes people admire you from a distance. And so we have to be so careful. This lady said, I don't know you personally, but I know of you. I've heard other people. And I suppose that's a lady speak of you and speak of you so well. And to be in this office and hear your name, you've been spoken about, it, it really hurts me. I believe that lady was a married woman too. I wow. got the, the sense in she was, the way how she took it. Yeah. And it was out of that why she called me. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I feel chills. Yeah, man. I it feel chills. My belly button. Wow. And, and that was the phone call. And, and so, you know, we go through and we say, well, should she have done it? You know? Yuri, would you have done it? Carol, would you have done it? That's the question now, because I'm saying, I always wonder if you have this information and it's not even do do? necessarily, if, if it's a, not even a stranger, suppose I found out that mm -hmm. let's say you're married and you are, you and I are friends and I find out that mm -hmm. your spouse is cheating on you. Mm -hmm. 
do I, how do I respond to that? Like, it's a question I, because do you want to know? Are you going to get upset with me if I tell yes. you? There are so many questions that yeah. go through your mind about that scenario. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I would have called you. I really don't know. And God. I like her. I probably would have. Called. I like her too, but I don't know if I would be her. Honestly, I don't know. Oh, mm -mm. I from from a couple of experiences that I've had when I'm the person with the information. Uh -huh. I mean, first what I do is go to the can I say the guilty part is go to the person um with practicing the indiscretion and say, you're putting me in a very awkward position. This is somebody that both of us love. I mean, and this is what you're doing. And so I'm gonna talk to you first. If you feel like you can't correct this or you can't pull away from it, then you're going to know that I am the person telling her. I, I have done that. Ooh. You know, I mean, I've even put my dad in trouble. Wow. You know, my stepmother went away and I went to spend time with my dad and I see him dress up. You're about him going to party. Me come to spend time with you, you dress up, right? And so when him comes, I say, I'm going to tell my stepmother, you dress up and go to party. And lo and behold, my stepmother stopped at the workplace and said, I see your husband dress up about him going to the party. And he might to call me and say, please tell her, I say, you know, go so because she not stop. I mean, I said, well, me did tell you. So I'm going to tell her, say you was, yeah, I'm that girl. But I usually tell the person I am going to You're say. Going because to the betrayal sometimes, a lot of people malice their friends because their friends didn't tell them about their, their spouse and then them right. and them spouse make it up right. and, and go. So I usually say you're putting me in a very odd position. Yeah. And if, if forced to do it, I'm going to say it. Yeah. Because I think about that. If I don't tell her or him mm -hmm. and they find out that I knew, mm -hmm. then I'll go vex with me. Right. If I do tell her or him, yeah. they're probably vex with me. So you Just put me same. in a quandary. Like, what yeah. do I do? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I guess it would have to be a leading by the Holy Spirit because I would yes. I, and then if I'm in the situation, if I am in a relationship and my partner is cheating on me, I think I'm going to want to know. And yes. I think I would want the person who loves me, my friend to tell me. I, right. think, I think so too. I think, but then mm -hmm. you don't really know how you're going to respond to a situation unless you're actually in it. Yeah. So. Yes. So you get the phone call, you're hanging out your clothes and shaking. Shaking. The, 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 when I remember this part, how I went back to the stove to finish cooking my husband's dinner. You <laughs> I like me. <laughs> I, I went like back to the stove. Yeah. <laughs> and I finished, and 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 I was nervous. Yuri, I I I was not so. People like to think that I was always brave. I wasn't so courageous. I never had so much courage to do something. I didn't know what to do. He got home and I was very quiet. I didn't say anything. And, and I know I've always practiced. I don't know if I'm able to say that. Myself. I will try to practice good self-control. Like I, I, I don't, I, I try not to react. If you see me look like I reacted, I'm playing. If it's very, I'm going to go quiet. And I went quiet for like three days. I was oh. doing my, 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 my domestic engineer work. <laughs> And I was, and I, and I, but I was quiet until one day I, I, what I did, I picked up the conversation from an anomaly that I had noticed on his phone bill. So a lot of things came together in that time when I went home. I don't usually pick up the mail. I picked up the mail um, because I got this particular phone for him as a gift. It was in my name. I mean, I know it's not mine. Right. Um, right. I, I opened the bill. I was looking at the bill. And I saw a lot of zero rated calls. Now, this was a post feed. And so I was a little curious. Why is that? Why are there so many zero dollar um, money value to, a, to one particular number? Mm -hmm. A part of the phone call, the lady said to me that this lady is on VIP with your husband. Jesus. Yeah. And I was like, no, but me and him not on VIP. Why would you put so? And I said it to the lady. I said, no, no, he, his phone is posted. I mean, if anything, he calls, you know? 
because we did have the conversation. Honey, you think we should go on VIP? And he was like, no. <laughs> so, so yeah, I took the so. pull me. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I took the discussion from there because okay. it was the it was the easiest of all the things that came up in the conversation. It was the easiest thing to, to believe you me. The other things were too hurtful. So I tagged I tagged the conversation on that. Mm -hmm. As I, I pick up the phone there, I notice a lot of zero dollar. Whose number is this? Uh, he didn't want to say at first. And so I, I said, um, is this so-and-so number? Because there was a rumor previously. I tell you, we don't pay attention. Life don't show surprises. There are always a little pinkish, reddish flags. And so I asked. Let's go back to that in a moment. Don't forget yeah. this. That. Yes. So I said, is this her number? And he said, yes. He said, she asked me. And I said, go. I'm like, but why would you do that? Why would you, <laughs> why would you be on VIP with somebody who's not your wife? Right. And he said, well, it's not a big deal. She asked me and I said, yeah, but then I'd say, but I did ask you. And you said it wasn't necessary. And he said, well, as I told you, I didn't think it was necessary. You lose your voice in situations like these, depending on your personality. Because this, he doesn't quarrel. He's not badgering, but he says, like I told you, it wasn't necessary. Now, depending on where you are in your heart, in your head, with your self-confidence and your self-esteem, mm -hmm. sentences like those can mess you up. What did it do to you? I'm big. I think we've all had have that experience a big bulky ear bubble thing in your throat. You swallow hard because you try not cry. Mm -hmm. And it's it's physically hurting you. Um, but yeah, try to make the ear bubble go down. Can you, it's like a punch. It's like a it was like a punch. Like I told you, it's not, it was not necessary. But yet still, some other lady convinced it was necessary. Her, and, and there was no quarreling. And I think. By virtue, and I, and I said it the last time, one of our issues were we did not have quarrels. Yeah, so I, I swallowed hard. And there was no further discussion on that. Hmm. So I just walk away with that pain. Wow. Yeah, so that shut down the, the whole, anything, any other thing that I wanted to do confrontation with, that shut that down for a while. And so if, if, if I should just open that window a little, so you walk away with a new hurt on top of all the other questions, on top of the pain for three days, and you think, oh my God, this can't be it. Because mm -hmm. I, tr I felt like that was disrespectful because you're saying it wasn't necessary for me, but it was okay for somebody. And so that, 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 did, that did something. Yeah, man, that hurt, that hurt like, what can I tell you it hurt like? Mm, that, that did really hurt. And, yeah. I, and it festered because I wasn't finished. That was the easiest thing that I could start with. And it ended a particular way. And so I had to go back to go fix myself, set up and find more courage to come and talk about other things. Why is it that a friend of yours can tell people at your office that you've decided that while I'm here, you're eating out. And that's not with me. And so the same meal, like I tell you, that I was preparing, that meal stayed in the fridge for almost a week. So yes, so this is why I said when the lady spoke, I know that it's not somebody make up something. Because when, you know, I was saying, okay, okay. So it followed, it followed suit stuff like that and the whole matter of school um i didn't know it was such a sore point but the lady had her own comments about me going back to school oh <laughs> what did you say yuri i said wow i said wow yeah she had her opinion on it yeah well and she shared it openly in her office Oh, the other lady. Can I just, the VIP, can I just, yes, the VIP can I, lady. Yes. yes. And, she, and she said this. And this one, um, 
this part of the conversation I had with him one Sunday morning when I was getting ready to work, because I had to do it in bits and pieces, because he's not your typical argument, argument person. And right. she said, well, if she don't want to come get the man in Pitney, we will volunteer. You broke up a while ago, Carol. Say that again. To, to have a child for him while I was going to school. You broke up a while ago, Carol. Say that again for me. Okay, so I was saying mm -hmm. um, her interpretation of me going back to school uh -huh. was that me a hold up from giving the man a child. He had a son from a previous relationship. So she okay. said, well, if she don't want to do it, we volunteer. So she said that in her office. And so, I, yeah, so I, I had to ask him about that one, Yuri. I'm sorry, I couldn't make it pass. I was like, what are you discussing um, with this woman? Right. What else did you say? Yeah. That time he answered. He responded. Okay. He responded. Yeah. So he can control her and what she say and what she don't say. And yes, he might have shared whatever that had gone back to school and he would have preferred, but he did not expect that. Da, da, da. He answered that one. So was in all of this, so you're, you confront him about the, the phone bill. You're asking him about this comment that she made about childbearing. Was there any remorse that he showed for his action? Any kind of, Carol, I'm so sorry, let's fix this. Anything like that? No, ma'am. Like I told you the last time we spoke, uh -huh. his apology came to me three years after we separated uh -huh. our four years, 2008 to 2012, four years. That's when I got the full bodied apology. And let me just re re remind you, or, you know, there might be new persons. He said, in my mind, it was going to be temporary. Mm. I did not expect you to walk away. And then he asked me, why did you take me serious this time when I said I no longer wanted the relationship, when I said it to you twice before and you did not um, accept it once? And he said, once, once you laughed at me and the other time you tell me, say, you're going to pray, auntie, thank you. Mm -hmm. He asked me that after we were separated and the divorce proceeding that started. He, he mm -hmm. asked. Mm -hmm. Well, he apologized. He apologized for it. Yes, he apologized. Um, never think you'd go anywhere. Never expect that that would so on. So, so I guess that means in, in a man's language, you were supposed to stay and be docile and just walk him through the process. Yeah, he oh, yeah. asked me why did I... Um, accept his statements when he said he didn't want a relationship because he said explicitly and let me tell you i said to him three weeks or so before he told me what i didn't want to hear i said unless you tell me you don't want me anymore unless you tell me you don't love me anymore i'm staying right here and i'm praying and i'm believing god for a turnaround and i'm not moving he repeated the same words to me three weeks or sometime within a month come yeah, on that he didn't want you and didn't love you anymore. i do not love you anymore i do not want this relationship anymore <sighs> we have grown apart we've grown so far apart so many things have happened that we've swept under the rug and i don't think we can fix them we want different things in life now was what he said no those four sentences changed life as I knew it mm -hmm. because I said, okay. And I didn't say it because I was strong. No, I said it because year seven in our marriage where we had a beautiful year. So we were married for like nine and a half years. Mm -hmm. Um, year seven, we, we, we covenanted back, you know, we, we settled in with self because stuff happened in year five that I didn't know was happening. Mm -hmm. Um, and so there was some turbulence between year five and seven. And so in year seven, when we, Anna said, don't do this again, 
don't do that again. Don't, and he said, no, no, I won't. We will do everything together. I'll talk to you about so and so. And, and I said, please remember this conversation. Because if you take me through that again, mm -hmm. I'm going to promise you that I'm going to allow myself to go down that low again to come back up. So when he said that, that's, that was my reference point. And I said, okay. Because I wasn't going to cry and ball and beg you to stay again. No. no. And it was not because I was strong. Because I have had friends who said, girl, you're strong. I ball. I said, okay, to him. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm dead my ball in the traffic. <laughs> <laughs> but balling doesn't make you weak. It makes well, you weak. Well, yes. Just to say, it's not like, okay. It's I you, understand. It's Right. No, it wasn't. It was. It was. It was gut wrenching. Right. Gut wrenching to hear him say that. It. 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 This was my friend. Um, I got married at twenty one. Uh, everything I knew about man and woman story in an in intimate way. Um, right. I started with him, and he taught me a number of things. He taught me how to. Be nice to people. Be nicer to people. Because he's a people person. Can't take that away from him. No matter how the marriage ended or whatever. He's one of the best human beings I know in terms of treating people right. Um, he taught me how to, be re how to relax with every class of, 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 of people. And just how to just be comfortable with everyone and help everyone that you can. Well, the helping part, I'm normally helpful. But in, just, in terms of just relax and go easy with everybody. I, I learned that from him. Um, we grew up together. We laugh at things together. We laugh at intimate um, progress. <laughs> we laugh at um, me trying new recipe and him eating it, whether I good, bad, or whatever. We 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 were like he was the big brother I never had, mm -hmm. you know. So to wake up the next day and to know that hey, you accept what the man said, that was a spinning wheel. Mm -hmm yeah and so to to just zoom in on you were going to say something yuri i was just gonna go into you said it was gut-wrenching just the the real practical emotions that you were feeling you know after hearing him say those words and then you know through the process of the separation which you told me the last time was the long part of mm -hmm. your divorce proceeding i guess you'd say yeah. And then the, the actual final divorce was shorter. But just yeah. take me through the raw emotions that you were feeling. Okay. All right. So I said, okay. And this was, I tell you, this was Caledona Avenue. I was leaving work and there were some things that were, they weren't adding up. And so I called. Mm -hmm. I called between Morasco Road and the conversation. We came around, I guess, and this was Caledonia Avenue. And I don't remember what statement he made after I said, okay. And I said, because as much as blood is running through your body, blood is running through mine it's not water running through my veins and blood running through yours they have they have they have feelings right and there was a little chuckle but you i said i do not want you any more than you want me as long as you can comfortably make the statement to me for all that we've been through all that we've achieved together all that um you've been to me me and I have meant to you and to our families and you can now make the statements then I'm, I'm, I'm good at it I'm accepting it and so we hung up it was a phone call so tacky but it was a phone call I remember when I got home I went straight to so I was numb between Caledona Avenue <laughs> going Linda's Road going home I was living at Richmond Park at the time hold on I'm sorry he told you that he no longer wanted you no longer blah 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 on the phone on the phone this was on the phone because i was asking him a question oh. i'm going to complicate things a little bit because we were talking about one female okay but at work 
I, I discovered some emails and this was a different female. Okay. So I printed the emails. I'm going to tell you that I forgot the emails on my desk, but that's a different story. So I, <laughs> I was calling him about the content of the email, but it was with another lady. Okay. So that is what led into that. So now okay. the, my focus shifted from the person who was local. Okay, this one was in North America. In, um, so I was asking about this. And by now, I think what happened to me, I was probably getting angry because I was dealing with one situation. I know I hit a plunge into another thing. And I tell you, I keep asking myself, how come I saw that email? Why did I see that email? Why did right. that lady call me? Why did right. I open the phone? You know, all of those things. And so by now, I, I was losing my cool, Yuri. I, I was getting angry and I was feeling stupid. I, I was feeling played. And so I called it, you know, in no uncertain terms. Now, this is the woman who called you and want to call you affectionate name and not, and not acknowledge me on the phone and she know me. This is the woman who's emailing you to say so and so. So I was a little, I was, I was pumped. I was, I was pumped. Yeah. Um, and he was trying to deny it. And I was like, no, don't do that. I saw the emails. I have the emails. They're here. This is why you've been acting now. You've been acting because her letter, take a deep breath. There was a content in one of her emails that dated two years to date to where we were in our marriage and what was happening my god yes and so i my head was spinning i was confused i'm like over the last two years i've been trying we've been talking we've been what happened where did i you know and 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 he didn't really want to admit he was saying she's saying what she's saying did you see me respond real and true i didn't see him respond mm -hmm. didn't see those emails i just see the the email thread that would come after whatever and what she said would sound like, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it was, that was hurtful because that lady on previous occasion, she was disrespectful to me. Mm -hmm. And, and so I was hurt and everything seemed like that it was coming together and making sense. And the sense that it was making, I didn't want to accept that sense. I was in my own little bubble. My head was in the sand. I was going through things weren't perfect, but they weren't horrible. Mm -hmm. and and so when he finally said okay you are right and he called it and this is i think this is why i call it indiscretion i have had some indiscretions mm -hmm. and that the, and then from there i don't love you anymore um <laughs> I don't want this marriage anymore to repeat what I'd say if you say yeah so by the time I got home I was I was numb I, was, I drove home I I I I I I was I was confused because my brain you know me you're but my brain started going over I'm thinking what is me what does this what and and mm -hmm. I went to my room I didn't even greet the lady I was living with well mm -hmm. I went in and I sobbed and sobbed and you know them sub they will come from way down here so and it jerking your body you're convulsing because everything no yes oh i miss this oh i didn't i miss that and it was raw and and i felt alone yeah because my my parents they loved him my friends loved him um at church we were you know like and so i didn't feel like oh i could reach out to anybody it's not like no when you have some girlfriends you can call and just i i felt so alone because my um, my mother would have been in denial my my stepmother and my father know us to be good well i thought they knew us to be good because uh -huh. when the support system chipped in from those two people i recognized that they, they've been standing behind me all this while yeah you know it was that's a that's a that's that's part three but yeah, the hurt right. that I felt at the time when I felt that I, I just seemed like because we were a community and everybody was into everybody, I felt like there was nobody I could relate to. Mm -hmm. And so with all of that, I tried, I think I buried myself in the bed, tried to sleep, didn't sleep. And then the lady, Miss Janice, my lovely little old lady friend, she called me 
And I went down to the kitchen because I was saying your dinner was ready. And I went down to the kitchen. I should say, oh, oh, you're yeah, up oh, there study. I must say, I didn't study from my get in. I having a headache. And she said, what happened? And I said, Donald said he doesn't want the marriage anymore. She stopped Yuri. And she looked, she said, why you said? Yeah. And I told her. And it's like that woman took my pain, like my real mother. She took it. And she, and she hugged me. I, she didn't really cry. I don't remember that she cried, but the, the, there, was, there was just something. It's like she had tried to take it out, take it out and said, don't worry. And, and I'll always remember she said this. She like, she pushed me away and she said, Carol, him tell you this when you are study, then Donald couldn't wait. And, and then now the tears start coming down her eyes. I'm like, I tell her, yeah. He said it, but then I said to her, probably it's just time. I need to know because there are so many liquor things. So with this happening, at least now I know where I stay. Um, to, to, in testament to God's faithfulness, I'd like to tell you that for that semester, contrary to what anybody would expect, I got three A's and a B, Yuri. Yeah, that was, that's my best it's my best semester ever. I remember my stepmother said the thing and she said, wait, you take out everything from the book them. <laughs> I, I don't know how God did it, but he did it. And, but just to answer your question about the emotions, I don't know that I can describe it to you, but I know I said to my sisters, I don't want you to ever have to go through a separation. Because it was separation at the time. It wasn't divorce. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the whole matter of, so where I'm going to live, what am I going to use as my address, what's name. For the next two weeks, there are so many questions in my head. Yeah. You know, my normal change with that one telephone conversation, mm -hmm. my normal changed. Yeah. And, and it, messed with my, it messed with my self esteem because I felt like I wasn't enough. So mm -hmm. now when, you know, like you would say, oh, you are such a confident lady. I mean, I've gone down to down zero with that confidence, my sister. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it messed me up. I feel like, okay, I never look good then. Um, I think what I had, I don't know what other hairstyle I had. I was thinking, okay, well, maybe me did for do something else. You know, maybe me did for wear tighter clothes. These are the things. These are, I, keep, I kept saying, okay, well, maybe me did need for wear shorter clothes. I, some things I, mm -hmm. I went through because I took blame. That's how I am. I say, okay, maybe I, whatever, maybe I'm going say, okay, a school thing here, you know, a school mm -hmm. thing here, never. And then I have to, to console myself, I always have to go back and say, he said it was okay. Because I know in my heart, if they say, okay, no, you know, we know, I would have stayed. Mm -hmm. So it, it just, it hurt. And then my pride, mm -hmm. my pride was damaged. And, and I felt such shame. Let me tell you about shame. I, shame was my company for years i was ashamed when persons asked me how things i was ashamed when people said so what car see i was ashamed when people say i saw woman no matter what they tried to say i i experienced shame yeah but for like maybe two and a half three good years shame me shit me just oh God. <laughs> yeah. earlier car you had said life doesn't throw us surprises mm -hmm. so there are always some flags red flags that you you know that are there that we choose to ignore i mean many yes. of us have experienced different things different relationships different problems in relationships different we've had different experiences along our life journey yes. and the signs were all there talk to me if you can about some of the red flags that were there prior to it coming right out in your face? Okay, so one of, the, one, one of the major things that I noticed was the change in our sex life or the activity or who would initiate, and I almost say instigate, <laughs> who would initiate it? That would, there was a, there was a, no, when I look back, I said, that's what caused that. And I remember one time in a joke about the whole thing that, how come um, so-and-so? And he would say, because you're coming in from Kingston and I think you're tired. And, you know, me take it to you know, you're <laughs> And so I would say to women, 
pay attention to when the whole matter of your, your spouse's um, desire for you or him reaching for you or not that we're saying men are the ones who initiate stuff, should initiate, no, but in terms of the pattern, you notice the change in the pattern, don't take the excuse that, oh, I'm tired or oh, I'm a, I'm a man don't say so. No, no. Man them, always them, hungry. Them always hungry and thirsty. <laughs> Don't yeah. fool yourself and say, oh, I'm more caring. And I'm more caring. Sex and caring. As far as I'm concerned, sex is caring. <laughs> so, when you, yes. so when you see that, when I saw that change and I sat back and I look on it, because now I think for me, you know, I think my, 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 my libido was increasing at the time when there was no little or no attention. But then... He yeah, said, so, oh, husband and wife, no shame in the game. You just be the one to start and do it. And I said, okay. But that was, that was, there was an indicator there. Yeah. That we reasoned away. The other thing was like with the cooking. If you're not coming home to eat my food, so where are you eating? Mm -hmm. And this is not a fast food um, person. He said, okay, well, me, 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 me try avoid eating late. You've always been eating late for the last eight, nine years. You know, that, that was something that, yeah. And so then did you there talk was about that. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Did mm -hmm. you talk about the fact that he was not eating your food? When you no, know, it was, wasn't until after the third part, she said what she said. Then I said, oh, oh so this is okay. what that, yes. He didn't okay. respond to that. Okay. The other thing. So there was a time where, when, like I told about year seven, every time I go out, he want me on him shoulder to go everywhere and to do everything, come dress this, um, wear that. And then after a while, you wouldn't even know that he was going to, that somebody invited him someplace until he got home. Ah, uh, yeah. So he started getting home later, started um, the accountability, went down, yeah? Mm -hmm. and, and so the, those are, that's, that, that's four things. In the other thing, the fifth one, was just the matter of the friendship. I think that one more than anything messed with me because regardless of everything, we were always friends. Mm -hmm. Like you would be talking and the conversations would be shorter. But it was still me going back and forth. So when I was away, conversations would be shorter. The, the number of phone calls. Don't make excuses for your husbands and your spouses, ladies or gentlemen. When you notice these things, it's an indication that something else is happening. And, and I now say this matter of option and choices is a killer to us trying to make our relationships work. What once, do you mean? Once you feel like, okay, there's an alternative. If it uh -oh. is just a phone call, you don't make the same effort to go to who is your, your, your primary um, go-to person. That change, it usually does. When, when somebody says, oh, well, his job has changed. No, at the same job. And he used to make the time to call you. And then mm -hmm. you're not, because somebody else is calling him or he's calling somebody. So those yeah, five okay. things, yeah, lessons that I've learned and I tell people, pay attention. It's not like you're going to be paranoid, but when you see it start happening, Call out the person in love on it and say, okay, I see this happening and I believe so and so. Let us mm -hmm. talk about it. Don't just ignore it because I'm not going to talk about it. Yeah. Because until it's done, it's not done. So mm -hmm. somebody might say, okay, well, but he's been doing this for two weeks. And, and I'll say to you, he's only been doing this for two weeks. But what happens when you've had experience like mine? I can talk. Like I can say that to you, Yuri. Because of where I've been. Mm -hmm. And somebody said, but what you say, two weeks of this is hard. And I'll tell you, what you should try to do now is to get some form of intervention. Reach out, talk. Stop what you're doing. Drop what you're doing. Ask him to drop what you're doing. Because you don't want that to breed into something else. Because in all fairness, he said this was supposed to be temporary. Mm -hmm. Yes, this was not about, I was just going to, and I know, and I know it was going, yeah. So sometimes we have to help our partners. Yeah, it's just yeah. that there may be so many other things happening 
and they won't take your help and they start resisting you and pushing you away and messing up with how you feel that's a different that's a different story mm. yes yeah all right so you separated you divorced did you ever struggle with unforgiveness or bitterness carol because yes. you're a good christian girl did you ever have that struggle yes i i so let me let me tell you something that happened to me in the reverse mm -hmm. i i forgive both because i hated the one the local one i i i, I couldn't stand her yes okay. so that's one mm -hmm. two the one from overseas i felt i thought she was contemptuous or i felt contempt for her Mm -hmm. because you walk into somebody's marriage and you you state your claim and you say this and you say that and mm -hmm. you're ready i can't wait two more years um to have you in my life da, da, da. it's killing me and so i was like who is this and so i detested them badly the settings man the settings i'm a wish them things <laughs> mm -hmm. but this will matter. And I saw something on Monique's page today where she said, there's no way that as you pass through life that you will not be wounded and disappointed. Mm. Forgiveness is required to do life well in every situation. Say and that again, sister. <laughs> every situation, <laughs> forgiveness yeah. is required. But yeah. Yuri, I, the way how it played out, I forgive them first before I forgive him. Mm. Because the friendship that we had, we had a friendship that would make you jealous. <laughs> yeah, man, we were we were friends. We shared everything. We, mm -hmm. um, I was so open with stuff. Like I remember the first time I had a crush on a gentleman. We, I was married. We were married. I had a mm -hmm. crush on a gentleman we were working a committee with, and I went home and I told him, and him and I laugh about it till mm -hmm. every time they meet, if you keep him, say, "I go look for your boyfriend now." <laughs> and wow. Stuff like, that, stuff like that, you know. So yeah. we we went through, and I was like, "Oh, could." You're my friend. You're my brother. You look I'm up on him. Yet I remember I said, "Yet here in the house, we're gonna lift me out and do it like this. How could you do this to me?" I was like, I was "Car." <laughs> Give us a second, guys. Caroli. Hold on. There you are. Car? Not hearing you. You're muted. Sorry. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so I was go saying, back yes. to your fringe, how you put the minis, your, your man friend. I, I, I was bitter towards one of the lady. Okay. I cussed out the local one because of the things she said about me in her office. Like, I felt like I could just tell my sister to go take her on. You know, because my sister is the bad one. <laughs> the quarrel one. And okay. so, and for him, I was just, I was disappointed. I, I was heartbroken. My heart broke, you know, like my heart broke till I lost weight. <laughs> I lost weight. My, 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 I can't tell her. I, I was disappointed in him. I, 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 I saw him so different. You know, I remember somebody asked me something and I said, yeah, he's dead. And, and she said, what? I said, well, he died spiritually. So he's dead. He's not the person that I got married to. But I, no, I wouldn't speak that way about him. I yeah. felt that way. Um, it took me some time. And I think, too, after he apologized and, and the things that he said, it helped. And so after that, I think we spoke here and there and we went over some things. He spoke openly and honestly to me, Yuri, about a lot of things, <laughs> some concessions that I could never believe that we were in the same marriage. Mm. Yeah. But nonetheless, I want to share. When I did counseling for myself, the counselor did say, 
a lot of the things that stayed together was because of how I approached the situation. And then when he spoke to me, he validated or verified what the gentleman said. And so it, 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 it helped, it, it helped calm a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. And yeah, no, no, we are friends now, you know. Yeah, man, he's That's my peer cool. counselor. <laughs> We are, we are friends now. Yeah. yeah. I, was, I was on a Zoom chat. God is amazing. I was on a Zoom chat a couple months ago. And the, the host asked me to pray. And so I started praying prophetically for uh -huh. the, the persons who were on there. And yes. the young lady was on there. Wow. I prayed for her. God is amazing. God is amazing. You remember not tell you so one minute in the CR first, like my shock, my wrist, my, my something go off. And I remember I texted my girlfriend because her husband was the I texted her and I said, so and so is on. And she said, I realized. And she said, Are you okay? And I said, Yes, I'm okay, but it 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 shocked me. Because she know, you know? Yeah, yeah. But I prayed for her. There are people watching us, Car, who are probably in different stages of the process of healing. And for you to have been able a few months ago to be on a Zoom call to pray for this woman, it, it, it speaks to God. Yeah, man. We're not take glory for nothing. This has nothing. to be God. God. Mm -hmm. And so what car you are doing counseling, were there any other practical things that you and God would, would, would have instructed you to do in the process? Because, you know, we're talking about adjusting to life after mm -hmm. divorce. Yes. What are the practical things then that God had you do or you saw God do himself that helped to bring you to this place of healing? Okay. I'm glad you asked about the process. Because like I shared um, previously, I did malice. I did cut a big malice on God. My malice him. I'm thinking him let me down. Yeah. And then I got to a place of girl, get up. <laughs> you know, um, sought out myself, and I went in. I, I, and it was hard. When you get broken, like with separation and divorce, let's treat women and men who go through separation and divorce. Let's treat them with. With love, maybe we can understand, but may God evoke in us love and understanding and even compassion for persons who go through divorce and trying to reinvent themselves and come around because you scrape, get scraped up off the ground. So I remember I got to a place where I was like, God, one day at a time. And when I tell people this nowadays in my year, it's because it was my experience. I like, I'm just waking up today. And I'm asking you to give me the grace. I learned grace through my separation. I learned the grace to deal with brokenness through that separation. So now a lot of things don't, I don't get flustered about a lot of things because I say, Lord, the grace, I know grace. So I ask God for the grace to endure it. And I ask him for the peace. I, 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 I used to I sit and wait on God's peace. Like something coming and my brain starts to go all over the place. I'm going to say, chill. And I said, Lord, I ask for your peace. And, and I waited on his peace and situation and keep quiet. Mm -hmm. But this whole matter of doing it one day at a time, understand. And, I, and it took me a while to stop asking, where am I going to live? Me I go married again? Me I go get for have children? Um, me I go for have sex with different men? Then, then oh, that did cast me these little things. You know? And I was like, yeah! And... Just ask God to make do this one day at a time. And I remember God sent someone to tell me, it's not the destination. It's, the, it's a journey. It's a journey. And, and, and that took me because I'm a planner. Mm. Yeah, man, I'm a plan. I'm a, I had to get to the place of, okay, you're going to feel this. You're going to get over this. You're going to get over that. Go through it with grace. Ask the Lord for peace. And so I have had, even, I mean, the last couple of years, I've had a season of peace that blew my mind because when you're used to the turmoils of 
things catching you off guard and shaking up your core and throwing you off base. And then you get to a place of God's peace and him having it together. And I'm like, okay, this comes at the end of that. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so I said to persons, be patient. And if you have a friend, a family member, and be patient with persons who are going through um, a loss, broken relationship, and they have to get over something that they thought they were cemented in. It, it mm -hmm. takes some time. And what I've also had to learn is to be patient with myself. Because every year I start to say, okay, when am I going to meet one man? Because, I mean, after the fifth or sixth year, I started thinking, okay, I could marry again. You know, at first you think, man, wicked, mm -mm, I stay far. I mean, all right. <laughs> but then after a while, I realized we were created for companionship. And so you start thinking, oh, is him that? One if is No. Get back to the place. Waiting is, waiting is not about looking around. Waiting is about, okay, God, prepare me for the person who's coming. Prepare him for me too. And while you're at it, Lord, the things that I did wrong, and this is part of what I have I've adjusted myself to thinking, Carol, ask more questions. Honey, you said it's okay, but how do you really feel? Mm -hmm. Because when I look back on it, being away, being out of the woman, the other woman's space and something, can I, ask, can I say open a door? Not, not, not that it was the only thing, but it mm -hmm. created a nice little, you know, avenue. Mm -hmm. Speak clearly, understand, don't assume anything because it's in your favor. Because I assume quickly because it was in my favor. Mm -hmm. In order to check, are you okay? Are you really okay? Do you know? I said, oh, you said, okay, good. All right. Drop off application in two weeks, that type of thing, you know? Yeah. And then the other thing in this process is when you... So you have to take, you have to share the blame, understand where you went wrong, repent of it. If you have to call the person and say, you know, yes, you took blame for so-and-so, but maybe if I did wait a little longer, so-and-so and so, or maybe look into it. And I yeah, like to yeah. say to people, that's why it is important for you to give it your very best shot, because you are going to come to the place where you stop and say, did I do all that I could have done? Mm -hmm. When somebody tells you, I did all that I could have done and lost my pride in the process, trying to keep my marriage. You have to respect that. Yeah. Yeah, you have to respect that. I got to a place where I said, you know, there's no pride in marriage. If you tell me anything, and unless you don't tell me, so so and so and so, of course, you end up telling me after. But I, I said, there's no pride here. I'm going to, I'm coming at you. We are keeping this. So and so and so. Give it your best shot because. Yeah. When you buy yourself and thinking, what, where did I go wrong? What did I, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to happen. The other thing, once you've accepted that the person is over you and it's just you out there, baby girl, baby boy, just know that you're going to be okay. God is faithful. And if you're walking in covenant with God, yeah. Who, yes, we know God hates divorce, but he also in his permissive will. So we talk about the divine will of God is that you don't leave. In his permissive will, he said, well, if so and so and so, they write a bill um, for divorce and this is what's going to happen. Pray that you're not the person causing so and so, so you stay single, that, that, that. And you stay and you're at a place now where you're at peace with that. And God has really reestablished you and he has really rebuild you your faculties are back together you understand where you went wrong you understand where the person went wrong you 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 may have to reinvent yourself so part of this carol fisher today is is a reinvented woman um there are a lot of things about me now that he didn't experience and he never had the joy <laughs> The joy. <laughs> the joy of experiencing. <laughs> I have had to go to the drawing board, look at how I do things, look at how I carry myself, look at how I represent myself, look at how I treat with people, because that's another thing, you know? Look at how I show love, look at how I apply wisdom in situations. And, and, and there's a lot of things. My values are the same. Mm -hmm. My values are the same. My love for God is the same. My understanding of God is, is bigger. 
um, my, my, my prior language is different. My worship has changed out of all that I've gone through because you can't go, the, the train can't drive over you and you get up back and say, hallelujah, like how you used to say it when the, dra the train never touched you. My worship has changed. You know, um, there's some, I don't remember which gospel artist say about, you don't understand my praise that you didn't experience my pain. And so there are certain things that stays with me. You may not need nobody else to praise God beside me. But one, we make noise because when we remember what the Lord has done, there are some things, there are some places, I can't go back. You hear me, I go preach, stop me from talking. But Preach, this, sister. When I remember that, I almost go crazy because yeah. the man who made it think, I go live the rest of my life with, up and gone and a me one I'm a thing Jesus and peace what go happen and everything became like nothing and to come to a place where I have God I have friends I have a big old church community matter of fact I have two church communities yes. you know I have I have my, my enjoyment and my fulfillment at work is different because no my appreciation for things is so much different I don't take the little things for granted I, I don't, you, yeah. you know, and, 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 I, and I see things, it's almost like you watch Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Yes. And, and all them little, everything bigger. I yes. see things bigger. I see God bigger because I could have broke out, you know, I could have backslider. Look here, me did backslider. Mm -hmm. It's just that it was so quaint. If you don't, can you see me? But me didn't know, so me did go into a place where I know me that. God yeah. put down him hand, pull me up and say, girl, get up. You don't belong there. So, yeah. And God, the Holy Spirit stood with me. In mornings, Yuri, the Holy Spirit would be on my bedside as a girl. Get, get up. Stop it. Carol, come, come, come. And when my mom pulled the sheets, I literally, you've heard me say, I literally feel, felt God's embrace. Yeah. So when you know God for yourself, them way there, Jaja. Can you say that? <laughs> yes. Of course you can. <laughs> but, but, but I, and when I see, I think like, I don't think I had the measure of compassion for people like I have now. And also, I think because also the little, the sensing and the little prophetic gifting, I don't know. Well, you go through some things or help you pick up some things and then the Lord you, when you, you go through, just like Jeremiah, there are some things the Lord said to him. That's why you have to go through this. That's why I'm not to teach you this. That's why you have to stay. So there are a lot of things that comes. I don't want to say easier, but there are a lot of things that come to me stronger because I feel for you. I remember the first time I felt pain in somebody else's pain and I couldn't understand it. And Nikki Berger was my core leader. And she said that it's a part of the prophetic gifting that is in you. What you're feeling is what she's going through. Yes. And I remember I call a young lady. I'm not saying I don't normally cry for people. I don't normally feel so strong. I don't know how she does work on me, in my department. But I felt the convulsions there. I felt the pain. And so when I see, and this is something that I am glad I'm at this moment where I can talk. If there's any woman or man on this feed, you've been divorced. And so it messes with your sexuality or your sensuality. It messes, you're used to a particular lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And no, you don't have that go-to person, but the feelings are real. And, 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 and you want, you want, you want that experience and all of that. And sometimes mm -hmm. now I understand why some divorced women are so sexy. I never mm -hmm. could understand it before. And you say, oh, well, and people judge them and say, oh, if her husband left her, she does bad. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't see, I don't see men and women who've been married and not married. No, I don't see them like that. And I don't see them like that. You understand when you wow. spend a decade of your life or more with a particular star and yeah. it takes some healing. It takes some transformation. It takes some readjusting. Um, I don't want to say luckily for me, but all my life I have had the, I've had a gracing on my life when it come on to sexuality. It's not my weakness, but just you like say, I, I had, had, girl. 
Wait, you no, know, just like I can be a fly mode. I like to say to people when they say you don't have feelings, that's at first I have feelings, but it's not my weakness. But look how me talk and get in trouble. You don't talk and get in trouble. You quiet. You might have that thing. That's not me. But you have to understand that people go through the process of breaking away from this is what I used to. Your body not catch on sometime, you know. And you still have the feeling and the thing. I said, no, but you don't have no husband. You don't have no wife. You have to just kind of take a cold shower, read a book. I don't know. They said, don't listen to the blues when you're experiencing the blues. Some, there are some things you don't do. You don't want to put yourself in trouble. Yeah. And I like to say, my, my friend Trisha Ann, you know, she's had some experiences. And I heard her say this. And, 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 it, and I said, but that's my experience. She said, it's good to stay busy doing God's work. And I was like, that's me. I just didn't, I just didn't put it in a sentence. So I have been busy doing stuff. And when some people say, oh, I assume you're busy. No, man, at this middle, I'm going to keep busy. Yeah, man. And there are women on here who are single. And I mean, yourself, you're, you get to adulthood single. How did that happen? How are you going to redirect your energies to not give it? You look good. We look good. Men are Smell good. <laughs> Body up there. <laughs> there you go. We are good as. <laughs> it's all like Jody. How do you not turn away from the goodness of God or just go to go off on that? Not that you might not make mistakes there and there, but yeah. we are we are not practicing sinners. We are not practicing sinners. There's a difference, you know. You are a saint that will sin occasionally, but you're yeah. not a practicing sinner. Right. And so we have to do things. We have to find things to be involved in. Serve a community. It could be where you live. It can be where you worship. It can be where you work. Serve people with your skills and your giftings. And mm -hmm. I'm a big advocate for that. Do stuff. Help out. Volunteer. There is always so much more to do in the house of God. At a primary school. At, even at a, at a college or at a community center, there's always some, use your energy, redirect your energies. Mm -hmm. Have friends. Because when night call, or when you're just finished menstruating as a woman, I don't know what men, when are men, when them, when, when women tend to, their libido goes up um, just before they finish menstruating or just after, you know, what do you do them time that when it's nothing about your spirituality? I know spiritually and a spiritual is just the chemicals in your body telling your breast to stop. Can I talk like that, Yuri? Talk free, sister. When you get to our age, when your, your, your hormones stay a particular way and your body, the chemicals say, okay, breast, set up. Mm -hmm. And then your donor, your pelvic girdle feel like it wants to just go off in the rhythm. What do you do? It's natural. And, yeah. and, and I'll never forget this pastor, Elvis Burnett, said, you don't pray away your sexuality. You ask the Lord to give you the grace. Of control, right. Control it. Yeah. And this is real. So a lot of women, you see women at certain age, and then you see them with a baby and they're single. It's because what we are going through at certain age, and we're not involved in anything. We're not busy enough. So somebody saying something and say something and we feel good and we give in and then we're very ripe and fertile and a baby come and we say oh well them not live good it's not always because men and women yeah. not live good why they fall off into a sin and sometimes a one thing happened I have a girlfriend who got pregnant one thing happened and that's it were we going to judge her by that says she bad no but it's just that we have to have outlets we have to, and, 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 you know, Christendom, and I like talks with Yuri. Um, my friend Simone has you kneel with me. Um, Stacey had another thing about women. We have to be able to talk. Right. We have to share. We, we have to network and say, okay, how do you do this? How do you, yeah, man, we have to talk about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I remember you were saying, Car, that, when it ended, you started to question yourself. You know, you question your sexuality, your sensuality, you question, is it how I'm dressing? Is it how my hair stays? Is it all of these physical things? And so you were dealing with that rejection. 
And as we close up tonight, you know, I want you to talk to somebody who is going through that. Because we've all faced the last the last talk I did was with Pastor about unseating the root of rejection. We've all faced it in different ways. And some of us are actively struggling with this whole thing of rejection. Like, like I say to you all the time, you're such a confident woman and it comes across in how you are so free in being able to compliment another woman. You, you always encourage me. I always leave a conversation with you encouraged. Mm -hmm. You always compliment me on different things. And it's nothing to you to, to, to big up another woman. And that comes from a place of confidence, confidence in who you are and who God made you to be. But you didn't always, you struggled with that in your own, in your own life. Yes. I want you to talk to men and women who are on here tonight, who are because of a divorce, because of a failed relationship, because of whatever reason, struggling with this whole thing of rejection. Talk to me about how God took you through and brought you to this place where you're solid okay so like i said two things first i learned how to ask god for his peace because life get trafficky mentally a lot of traffic when you when you suffer a loss and you enter that all of that and and the holy spirit just drop in my spirit and also when you don't get the promotion at work it also messes with that confidence too right and so you have to go you know david said great peace have they that know the lord and nothing <laughs> shall offend them and 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 you i learned how to ask god give me your peace on this give me your peace we need to get to the place of praying and peace it is a part of the fruit of the spirit it's a peg if we put in the tangerine analysis it's one of the pegs of the fruit of the spirit understanding that god's peace make the world of a difference understanding that god has this gift to give us and paul spoke about it over and over in ephesians when he spoke about the grace that, 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 that the Holy Spirit comes with. Grace is that thing that you can't do in your flesh, in your body, but it is divine enablement from God, you know? And so I have learned to ask the Lord, give me the grace on this. And maybe it's an understanding that it's enabling, enablement from God and it's not just a word, but I have learned to ask God for the grace. It's like a download if you want to put it. I'm facing this situation, it's new, it's hard, it's rough. Download into my spirit, God, how I can deal with this and how I can go through this so that you be glorified and I don't go off in my flesh and bring reproach to your name or to the body of Christ. Because part of what keeps me grounded is women like you, you know, who I know as Christian, other women, you know, have, have my root, have my past. There, there are some, when you think about, Things that is a no, I'm not going to bring reproach to these people because I'm in covenant with them. I'm accountable to them. We all need to have accountability partners. I remember back in the days, we used to have um, certain pastors, certain women, my friend Nadia, and I used to say, this group of women, they wouldn't do this. They wouldn't say this. I can't do that because I'm not representing them and I'm a part of them. Hold mm -hmm. yourself accountable. There's this thing I read over the last couple of days. He said that knowing yourself is a weapon. Understand wow. your weakness. Understanding your weakness is not a weakness, it's a strength. Because when you understand your weakness, then you put up, you put things into place, measures. Yeah. I, I do I do project management. And so you have to manage the risk. And so you might, okay, if I am going to go out with this gentleman, I'm not gonna wear my shortest of skirt. It's a man, he's looking on, but I want I'm going out on the date. It's okay to go out on how do I dress? What mm -hmm. do I say? What do I do? What do I drink? You know, mm -hmm. what do I don't drink? Knowing yourself is a weapon. Trying to ask God to show you the things that right now in this fasting season, Pastor, um, I'll talk to us about the iniquities. I mean, before, no, we weren't praying and asking him to show us, but ask the Lord to show you your weakness. When you understand your weakness, write them down. And then you say, okay, how can I not get into trouble because of this weakness mm -hmm. and your superpower is your strength understanding your strength you don't become arrogant with it but you use your strength to serve other people so no i am a little stronger because of what i've gone through and so when i see brokenness i just want to deposit into 
the, the spirit of those men and women. Yes, it's harder for men because I've had experience of trying to help a man to rebuild and him fall in love with me and take me for marry him. Yeah, and so we, we have to, yes, it's true. <laughs> and so we have, to, we have to know ourselves. We have to know the prayers to ask God for. And by the way, just like how we add pepper and ketchup and mayonnaise, Prayer is our, con, con, what's the word? Condiment? Condiment. Prayer, yeah, is our condiment. We have to pray for everything and nothing. We have to talk to God through it. When you've been broken and coming back up, it's not you rebuilding. It's the Holy Spirit showing in the mortar, showing in the water, showing in little bit sand, little more cement. You have to understand that you're not, you're not going to get there one, all at once. This is something I've had to really tell myself. Carol, you're rebuilding, you're getting back. You're going to have somebody going say something and it hurts. So it don't, it don't have anything to do with the person. It's because of the experience that we've had. We have to understand that we see life as we are. And because of our experiences, certain things rub us somewhere. So sometimes it pays, it pays to just be quiet when you get hurt on something quickly, change the narrative. The person is not telling you this to be mean. You are interpreting it this way because so and so and so used to this one, so and this is what it meant. So you have to quickly apply wisdom, speak to yourself, and reject the negative thoughts. Reject the negative thoughts, especially when they come from yourself. I read in a book last year where it said that when somebody says something negative to you, it's far more easier to deal with than when you say something negative about yourself or to yourself. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. So I have had to change some narratives, Yuri. I've had to stop saying some things that I thought I was saying in jest about mm. myself. So we have to reject the negative. And there are some people who used to run certain jokes. When you're strong and open about some joke, all right, you know, it's when you're rebuilding, some things you kind of have to hurt it a bit and you have to say it with respect and you have to, we're walking out our salvation together. And so sometimes because somebody hurt us, it don't mean we need to lash. They didn't mean to be mean. It come off that way. And so we have, to, we have to be gracious. We have to understand that not everybody's out to get us. But if somebody's out to get you, you got to open your mouth and negate what they say to you and say, I speak against that. The word of God declare. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm not going to be so and so. No, that's not what God's word says. And no. you got to change your prayer language in your private space about people who you know is out to get you it is a jungle forget all the pretty face yuri and the pretty face carol behind all this there are some persons who don't mean us well and so while we are trying to build ourselves reinvent ourselves we have to pray against some things you yeah. have to pray differently it's not lowly jesus meek and my Look up on a little child. He's rather about so cold, but I shut the mouth of the avenger in the name of Jesus, Lord. I pray that you'll break the jawbone of my enemy because I do not. You have, you're having to pray against people who ought to get you because people hate you just because you look good. People hate you because they don't understand you. People hate you and they don't know that it is brokenness that builds you to something that they're seeing. Yeah. You can't play with, with fatty leg. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> Yeah, I can give credence to what you said a while ago because after my most devastating breakup, never been married, but my most devastating breakup, one of the things that God had me do, there is a, I don't know if you know Cindy Trim. Yes. She ha and she has a prayer called Commanding Your Morning. Yes. And it's like back and front, like eight pages. Yes. And for months, every day, God would have me recite this prayer i do it sometimes now when i'm low that's it yes sometimes when i'm low i still i still read it I walk mm -hmm. through my apartment and read it and declare mm -hmm. and so for months after the breakup i was declaring this yes. prayer and there are part there's a particular part of it that talks about it has the i am statement so yes. it talks about who you are Mm -hmm. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am the head and not the tail. I am accepted in the beloved. And that was one of the main things that I had to get, that I was accepted and not rejected. And so God had me on that declaration mm -hmm. thing for months. I don't even know how long it was, but I know it was not weeks. It was months. 
Mm-hmm. And so it's just to give credence to what you said. We must declare the word of God over ourselves because there are some words that are spoken. Yes, spoken, yes. And sometimes the person who is speaking the words does not mean to hurt you. And then there are times when the person does mean to but, hurt you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the point is that these words have power. Yes. The words are living. The words are mm-hmm. active. And so they take root in us. Yes. And so in order to uproot them, we have to counteract them with the word, which yes. is God's word, which is true. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, anybody tonight who might be going through this whole thing of rejection, going through a divorce, going through a separation, whatever it is that you're facing, that's a hard season you're in right now and you're doubting who you are in God. It's to get God's perspective on who you are. It's to get God's word. Amen. What is God's word about you? What is God saying about you? Because the word, you can't get that from the world. You can't get that truth from the world and from the naysayers. You have to get truth from God because he alone is truth. And so it's to really get a hold of what God says and continue to declare that thing over you until you believe it. And so car now when i look back because i used to be this insecure low self-esteem kind of girl never would you could never catch me on any platform without makeup on you could never i would never even take a picture even for a selfie in my phone without my makeup like it was that bad and now i look back at that girl and sometimes i weep for her like naive silly unsure of herself you know believing the lies living out the lies there you go Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. it's now after years now after that period of time that god had me declaring these things over my life declaring truth i can't i know that that was me but i can't put myself back in that frame of mind it's like oh 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 oh, we used to think that way there how come how come I never know this about myself? But it's a, it's a reality. And some of us, we've gone through it. But it's the word of God that has helped to solidify who we are and yeah. who we will become. It will be the word that helps us to get there to you go. where we're yeah. to go. Yeah, man. Yeah. Big difference, yes. And I like to say to people, there was this one guy who said to me, because he didn't have any words. He said, Carol, you will be okay. And I tell you, as simple as it is, now I understand. And so I can say to people, you will be okay. God got you. It's a process. It's messy. And we wish some things never happen. But if some things never happen, some other things could never happen either. And usually what happens on the other side, the output is usually greater than the input and the process itself. It's something that I've learned because how I who I am now and how I see myself there was a very simple version like you say you look at it was a very simple version of me that existed on the other side but there are places and platforms and things that the Lord is doing now that I I can better relate to so much more having gone through that valley yeah yeah and and so now when I'm I'm over here and of course I feel healed I'm happy I'm happy I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable. And so now when literally said, you're going to be okay. I said, oh, he didn't even know. You know, I'm okay. God got this. And God is faithful. You learn the faithfulness of God through your sufferings. Yeah. And him doing, I don't know if, if it takes away anything from God to say him doing just enough each time. He does just enough each time, just enough to carry you over to the other place. Yeah. Because sometimes if you do it all at once, we run ahead of ourselves and you hinted at it, Yuri, we run ahead of ourselves and make a mess of the process and have to start it all over again. Yeah. yeah. You know, but we will be okay. We have a yeah. faithful God faithful. and we're walking in a covenant with a God that keeps his end of the bargain. And if you're on the feed, and you're not in that covenant. Like you already had a post this week. How's your eternity? You know, now is a really good time for us to stop and take perspective into our lives. How is, how is, my, inter- how is my eternity? With everything that's happening, what if? And it's not a what if out of fear. It's a what if out of wisdom. Yeah, we are big people. We're not children anymore. 
you know, yeah. you have to stop and think, what if? So may we find a, 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 a hunger and a, and a desire to be in covenant, to be in righteousness, in right standing with this big God. There are a lot of things now, Yuri, that just look small and years gone by. We used to weep about it because to God, well, well, no. Dr. Yeah. Stern is over. Yeah. yeah. I keep remembering the, the, the song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. The words are so powerful. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What a privilege to carry everything, everything to God, God in prayer. Mm -hmm. And I have learned that. Yeah. I have learned that. You yeah. take everything to him. There are times when I'm thinking about something, Carol, on my bed and just mulling it over in my mind and going mm -hmm. through the scenario and making up a scenario and preempting the situation too. And mm -hmm. God is like, talk to me now. That's yeah. how he talks to me. Talk yeah. to me about it. Mm -hmm. and I'll be like Lord I don't even know how to say X mm -hmm. but I just start yeah. to talk I talk yeah. to him like because he's my friend so I talk yes. to him like why would I talk to my friend mm -hmm. say God you know say X and you know say I feel like them this me and whatever the situation is and yes. I just talk to my father yeah. about mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. and little by little as I go into his presence he changes my perspective on the matter yes. and he yes. shows me yours this is not matter, you know. This is not important. Mm -hmm. And one of the things you will hear me say often, this has no eternal value. Mm -hmm. And so when we can look at the situation, bring everything to the Lord. And I'm encouraging people watching tonight and who will watch this back. Bring that situation that you're in tonight. Bring that situation to the Lord. Give him everything. And he can take it. He's a God who can handle your mess. He can handle the situation, he can handle the pain, he can handle what you're going through. Bring it all to him, the rawness of emotion, bring it to him. And you'll okay. see where God takes it. it. For Carol, it was little by little, day by day. And it is a deliberateness to say, mm -hmm. day by day. Even Jesus said, if you want to follow me, take up your cross daily. And follow me is a daily decision to walk with God. It's a daily decision of laying down this thing before the Lord. Whatever it is, allowing him into the situation day by day. And you will see where the days and the month and the weeks and the months pass. And you look back and you're like, that situation that was that seemed insurmountable. What happened yeah. again? Yeah. Mm. And trust me, mm -hmm. God can handle absolutely any and everything that we bring yeah. to him. Amen. Car. Praise God. Pray for us, yes. please. Okay, let's pray. Almighty God, our Father, our way maker. God, we thank you that you are with us on this journey. But not just that, you are chief navigator. You sit high and you already know the destination. And that's why you cause us to turn right and then to turn left and go around the roundabout. And so God, even now, we ask you for your forgiveness where we have not trusted you in navigating our lives. Lord, we ask you for your forgiveness where we've pulled up the emergency brake when you wanted us to gas. And Father, where we've pressed gas, where you wanted us to break up. Father, we just commit ourselves to you afresh. Every person in this small circle, every person and the persons who will watch after. We commit the very concerns of our lives to you. The situation that we are going through right now, that we are agitating over. God, we just, we know you're going to fix it. So help us not to be anxious for anything, but to trust in your faithfulness and in your great love. You sent your son. What else will you not do for us? Lord, we thank you for every mountain that you brought us over. Yes. Lord, we thank you that through you, by you, we, we, we've run through a troop. By you, mighty God, we've le leapt over a wall. And Lord, we thank you that in the darkest of nights, you are with us. Lord, we thank you that you are our shepherd. 
Lord, we thank you that your rod and your staff is there to protect us and to guide us. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Lord, give us mm-hmm. a new heart, a new appetite for your word. And we pray that by your Holy Spirit, we'll be drawn into a new place of worship. And that by, by, by your grace, Lord, our prior language, our prior life will expand. We will open our mouth and commit things to you. We will open our mouth and speak life over our situations. Lord, we thank you for Yuri and this and this, this, this opening that you've made for her. Lord, I thank you for where you're carrying this. Lord, I thank you for the men and the women who are yet to come on and who will speak life into different persons at different times. Lord, we commit it all to your care, Lord. Be glorified on talks with Yuri. Be magnified on this platform. And cause it, Lord, that as she listens, as she opens doors that others can come and speak, that her depth in you will be, Lord God, like many anchors down below. And the height that she will excel in you, Lord God, will reach up to the heavens. Cause it, Lord God, that she will find peace and grace like we spoke of. Thank you for your favor on her. Thank you for your favor on every person that is hearing this. And thank you, Lord, for what you're, where you're taking us. Lord, we may have been broken, but you are the builder. Lord, we thank you that we may have cried, but it's not over. Thank you for the beauty that is coming for all the ashes. Thank you, Lord God, you said in your word, you know the plans you have for us. Plans to prosper us and not to harm us, to give us a blessed hope and a future. And right after that, Lord, you said that if we seek you, we shall find you. If we search for you with all of our hearts, So, Lord, may we keep searching for you and you are faithful to make yourself found by us. And we thank you for this glorious God, sovereign Father. We hail you, King, over our lives tonight and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you so much, my friend. Thank you. Thank you for sharing with us. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming on tonight and for joining us. Remember to like, share, comment on the feed, share it with someone who you know will benefit from the conversation. And for those of you, you know, Carol alluded to it earlier, for those of you who are not in covenant with Jesus, who do not know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, we don't want to ever take any opportunity for granted. We want to offer you the opportunity to come into that right standing that Carol talked about, that relationship with the Lord. Jesus, there is only one way to the Father, and that is through Jesus Christ, his Son. And so we present you with the opportunity to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. And if you are ready to make that decision tonight, I just want to lead you into a prayer of salvation. Repeat after me, if you will. Lord, I invite you into my heart to come in and to be the Lord of my life. I believe, Jesus, that you came to earth, that you lived, that you died and that on the third day you were raised from the dead, and that you you are seated at the right hand of the Father to make intercession for me. I accept you as my savior tonight. I give you my life. I ask, oh God, that you would come in, forgive me of all my sins, and set me on the right path. In Jesus' name, Amen. amen. If you prayed that prayer tonight, you are saved. And so the next step would be to get into a Bible-believing church, get into a church that teaches the word of God, the unadulterated word of God based on the Bible, get into somewhere that can teach you more about the Jesus that you have accepted into your heart, get into a Bible-believing church, get around Christian people who can help you to grow and know that your salvation is sure. So thank you so much for coming on tonight. Remember to share this video with your friends, share it with someone, share it on your social media pages with someone who you know would benefit from the conversation that we had tonight. Thanks again, Car, And God bless you all. Have a good night. Thank you, John.